Deputy O'Sullivan. Right. My question to the Minister is on the status of the outstanding issues relating to licences for the operation of horse-drawn carriages in Dublin. Minister has two minutes. Yeah, first of all, I'd like to thank the Deputy for raising this issue here today. I know how acquainted you are with it, and the matter for the consideration of the House, I would like to firstly outline some background to this issue. In February 2011, Dublin City Council took over responsibility for the licensing of horse-drawn carriage operators and drivers from the Garda Carriage Office. This was achieved through by, by laws enacted under Part 19 of the Local Government Act 2001. That legislation provides a general power to a local authority to make bylaws in relation to its own property or services or to regulate matters of local concern. It is under this Act that local authorities can choose, using bylaws, to regulate horse drawn carriages that operate for hire or reward within their functional area. These bylaws allow relevant local authorities to set their own rules and stipulations to govern such operations. In 2018, DCC became aware that specifically in relation to Dublin, this legal basis for making such bylaws could be uncertain. Local authorities may not make bylaws for purposes provided elsewhere in legislation. And the Dublin Carriage Act 1853 to 55 had previously vested the power to regulate horse-drawn carriages in Dublin with the Dublin Metropolitan Police Commissioners to whom Angarda Shikona is the successor. My department examined the issue and following legal advice is now the view that the Dublin Carriage Acts 1853 to 55 remain in force and preclude DCC from enacting the relevant bylaws. Having given the matter careful consideration, I form the view that the operation of horse-drawn carriages for hire or reward is best regulated by local authorities. I understand that DCC first became aware of the present legal issues during a routine review of the bylaws that considered inter alia whether there was need to strengthen measures to safeguard the welfare of horses used to draw carriages. Animal welfare issues are a matter of my colleague, the Minister for Agriculture and Food. I note that the Control of Horses Act 1996 allows local authorities to introduce bylaws designating certain areas as control areas for horses. DCC has designated its administrative boundaries as such a control area under its control of horses bylaws. Those bylaws require horses to be licensed set minimum standards. Regulations for horse-drawn carriages for hire or reward should be aligned with any horse welfare obligations imposed by local authorities. Accordingly, I'm of the view that horse-drawn carriages for hire and reward should be regulated by local authorities. The remaining paragraph will be included in the official uh, yeah. Deputy O'Sullivan. Okay. What it's showing is what happens when an issue falls between several different authorities. And within that lacuna, there is a terrible situation happening, whereas we have tourists and other people who are taking these horse-drawn carriage rides, mistakenly assuming that the Garda is fully vetted, that the, he's fully insured, that the carriage has been inspected and approved, that the horse is suitable to draw the carriage, and that the driver is skilled in the operation of the carriage, and that fires are set. But that's an assumption that's not borne out with the reality of the legislation. Now, I've met very responsible operators. We had a very nice event in Merrion Square. It happened to be in the, in the rain when a number of these horse-drawn carriages with their drivers came along. And they're very concerned about the way they're, which they're operating within this vacuum. Um, and in the meantime, tourists are assuming that everything is right. And we would hope that it won't take a serious accident to bring this to the fore. So I'm just asking, you know, can the various groups be brought together under your leadership, perhaps, to, in order to sort this out once and for all? Because the longer it's going on, the more abuses are happening. Oh my Minister, one minute. I think the, uh, the deputy is correct. I think there is a lacuna here and there is a vacuum here. And it's, uh, it's something which it is difficult uh, for me to defend because it's taken too long. Uh, and I want to apologise, Deputy, for that. I can only say that it, it is complicated because there are at least three departments involved in it now. And you're right, when you get three departments involved in what is, in, in, the, in the scale of things, a relatively minor issue, uh, and many of them have been involved not in introducing legislation of this sort, but in recent times in solely introducing emergency legislation for Brexit and, and areas like that. That applies to s several of the departments involved. I think that may be a, a uh, tangential reason why this, why this has happened. But it doesn't mean that there shouldn't be an urgency. And I think there is an obligation on us to get them together. And we're talking about the Department of Housing. We're talking about, obviously, uh, maybe the Attorney General's office. We're talking about the Department of Transport, maybe Justice and others uh, to, to look at this. And uh, obviously, we'd have to include the local authority about this. 
I did have a briefing on this yesterday from my officials because I knew this question was coming up. And I hope I've instilled a sense of real urgency into them because um, I was somewhat distressed by the fact that this is taking so long. Maybe it's not the fault of anybody in particular. It's the fault of the fact there are so many parties involved. Final but I will, question. I will try and inject a, a, a renewed sense of urgency into it now. Final question, Deputy O'Sullivan. which is on the welfare of the horses also. And, you know, many people, including myself, applauded you on the, act, the, act, the action that you took in relation to the greyhound racing. And that was very much to be welcomed. But there's also an, uh, an aspect of the welfare of horses now, uh, of the horses that are being used in the carriages, because the lack of minimum requirements is having a detrimental effect on the welfare of some of the horses, because there's no clear minimum standards. And their welfare is being affected. So there is a need for the regulation. There is a need for this this industry to be regulated, to have the regulations, to have the bylaws that are up to date and that are serving the industry well. So I do hope from what you said today that it will get the urgency that it needs because it's been going on for far too long. I mean, some of the acts go back to the 19th century, so they have to be brought into the 21st century. May I get the final response? Yeah, I think that <coughs> you put your finger on it and I'm not absolving myself of any blame there, but the fact that so many of the acts do go back so far makes it much more complicated, much more obscure and very, very time-consuming uh, as well. And if you've got several acts involved, of course, it does that. Um, and, and animal welfare is a matter for my colleague, the Minister for Agriculture and Food, but I'll be sure that he knows of the... I'm not passing the buck there, but I'll, just, I'll make sure that he knows the contents of this debate. The Control of Horses Act 1996 provides powers to local authorities to designate, using bylaws, by horse control areas within which horses are required to be licensed or where minimum standards are set for the keeping of horses. In this regard, Dublin City Council has designated its administrative area as such a control area under control of horses bylaws 2014, and the enforcement of these bylaws is a matter of the Council. The Council's responsibilities and experience in horse licensing and welfare matters is one of the reasons why we concluded that the Council is best placed to regulate horse-drawn carriages for hire or reward in Dublin. In relation to animal welfare more, more generally, I should mention that the Control of Horses Act 1996 also gives powers to members of the Garda Shikona to seize and detain horses and to require veterinary inspections. And the Garda also have powers of arrest in relation to animal cruelty incidents under the Animal Health 